Well, hello viewers. This is the desktop review of the Springfield M1A Scout. Um, the Scout is the middle version of the three basic um, Springfield M1A versions. You have the standard version, the long barrel version, then you have the Scout, and then you have the SOCOM 16. Uh, biggest way to uh, break out the difference of them is from the barrel. As you can see, the Scout is equipped with a 16-inch uh, barrel with a uh, flash hider on the front of it. It's also identifiable by the optic rail that is attached to the uh, top of the barrel. And it's available in both uh, a polymer furniture and also a wood furniture version. So to start with, we'll go ahead and clear the, uh, clear the gun. As you can see, the gun has an empty magazine and an empty chamber. So it is safe. Uh, one of the big reasons why I selected the Scout as the M1A of choice for me uh, is because I like the fact that it can be equipped uh, with a different muzzle device and um, it is suppressor, uh, it is a suppressor, uh, I guess, uh, compliant. Um, the SOCOM 16 has a fixed muzzle brake on the front of it. <clears throat> has a much uh, shorter fixed muzzle brake and it makes it very difficult to suppress. On this particular version um, you would remove this castle nut and this front uh, uh, assembly and you can put on a, um, a different muzzle device that will accept a uh, 51 tooth mount for uh, a suppressor like an AAC um, SDN6 or whatever you want. Um, there is also a uh, there's also uh, there's some other videos on YouTube that show the uh, adjustable gas nut uh, that you can get as well as the different front sight post um, that makes the gun a little bit more uh, compliant with uh, uh, or compatible I guess I should be saying compatible with uh, suppressors. But that's one of the cool features. Uh, the second feature about the M1A <clears throat> is the uh, optics rail. The optics rail uh, can take either a pistol, uh, a pistol-oriented um, magnified optic. Um, so it would be the same type of optic that would, you would put on the top of a, let's say, a hunting revolver or a Thompson contender. Or you can affix a, a red dot uh, scope to that. I've had my uh, EOTech on here before, and uh, the uh, the uh, witness from your eye. Uh, is very nice. It's got a great um, field of view. It is a little tall, so you may want to put something on the buttstock to get your cheek welded up a little bit, but um, fantastic as far as um, having a built-in optic rail. As you know, most Springfields um, use a uh, an over-the-breech uh, style optic rail where you would remove the stripper clip guide and install it. Uh, you install it right here. Um, those are nice if you want a magnified optic, but if you want just sort of a red dot or that type of thing, this is the best uh, that I've that I've found. A um, couple other things with the uh, Springfield, obviously, it is fed with a um, by a magazine. These are available in a variety of different conf configurations. This is a 20 round steel magazine from Springfield Armory. It's very high quality. Uh, there's a lot of cheaper mags out there on the uh, market. The one thing I can tell you is I highly recommend um, spending uh, the money to get a good quality magazine. Um, the guns just, they tend to be fairly robust, but um, the one issue that I've ever had with the M1A platform is bad magazines. If you're using a crummy magazine or a real cheapy um, then you'll tend to have, or at least I have tended to have issues. But when I use the high quality steel GI or Springfield Armory mags, uh, they tend to operate really well. So go over the controls with you real quickly. Um, first and foremost is the safety lever on this gun. Uh, a little bit controversial because um, you have to put your finger inside the trigger guard in order to activate the safety. Um, it is what it is. What I find is that when I operate it, um, I actually sling my finger forward. Let's see if I can do it for you where I can, you can see it. Um, I'll have my, uh, my hand kind of in that position, and I'll just 
stick my finger in there and then get it off of the uh, out of the trigger. I never actually brush the trigger itself. I just kind of push forward on it and I don't have much of a problem. When you put the gun back on safe, obviously you don't have to put your finger inside the trigger guard. You just pull back on it and it's good to go. Uh, this right here is your magazine release. Uh, the magazines on these guns are a little fiddly when you first get them. Um, a little bit AK style, you insert the magazine at about a 30 degree angle. And um, you kind of, it's a little difficult doing it here with the camera, but it uh, you have to rock it back and forth and then it locks in place just like that. Very sturdy magazine, very sturdy lockup. There's no play whatsoever in there. Um, if anything, they're, they're a little stiff. Um, there is no bolt release on these. There is a bolt hold open. Um, you can buy an aftermarket switch that will make this operate as a bolt release. Uh, I think Brownells carries them, a couple others. I just prefer to use the uh, charging handle. Um, you can either take your strong hand and release it, or a lot of guys will come back with their weak hand and either over the top or from the bottom release it. Either way you do it, um, just release it and let it slam home. Uh, the one thing about the M1 is the uh, it, it doesn't like to be dainty. Uh, you can operate it with um, sort of large motions and uh, just sort of grasp onto it and give it a good tug and, and uh, don't be gentle with it. It operates best that way. <clears throat> uh, front sight post, you can see it's a bladed front sight. Let's see if I can get a good angle on there. Bladed front sight uh, with the uh, front sight post. And then the uh, rear sight on these is a peep aperture. I don't think I can get it uh, on the actual sight post itself, but it is a peep aperture. And it is adjustable for windage. Um, uh, very nice, robust sight. It's got, the, uh, it's got the protective ears on there. And you can, replace the, uh, you can replace the sight here with a couple of different sizes of um, aperture. So if you're doing more... Uh, close-in work, you can get a much larger aperture that a la the SOCOM uh, 16, or you can use um, the uh, sort of the rifle, um, the rifle uh, size or the uh, uh, sight aperture. Um, all the information that comes on these guns is always posted right here. And as you can see, uh, this particular one is a Springfield uh, U.S. Rifle M1A. And um, really nice. Uh, the polymer furniture that comes on this is pretty nice. Fairly sturdy. Um, it's a little bit narrower, uh, both around where your where your uh, your shooting hand would go and also your support hand. And I actually like that a little bit. Um, some of the wooden stocks are a little thicker in these areas, and it's a little. Not only are they thicker, but they're a little slick. They look beautiful, you get a nice beautiful walnut stock, but at times um, when you're trying to get a good grip on the rifle, especially if your hands are wet or the rifle's wet, um, a little tough. These have nice checkering uh, both here and here, and they're a little thinner so you can get your hands around it and get a really good grasp um, on the rifle. Now this rifle does come standard with a rubber butt pad uh, that goes here. I just, out of purity stake, I put a um, the traditional uh, M1 um, uh, flip up buttstock or uh, butt pad on there. Um, it has a little storage compartment in the back here for uh, cleaning kit or whatever you want to put in there. Um, I just I've always liked the look and feel of this. I, it, it's just personal preference. The rubber butt pad actually works extremely well, um, but uh, I like that. Uh, I just like the look of that. Uh, also comes with front and rear sling swivels, and they're nice and sturdy. Um, you can put a, a nice high quality leather nylon sling on there to uh, get you a, a nice tight uh, shooting stance with the rifle. And a uh, couple of things about this gun. Number one, extremely accurate. Um, the, uh, the M1A or Springfield platform gun um, has, has phenomenal performance when it comes uh, to shooting uh, in 308. Um, I've shot this gun with open sights a um, couple hundred yards and it's just it's just amazing at how accurate the rifle is. Um, it, it, with an optic um, obviously you can reach out much further than that. Um, 
the M1 series of rifle are, you know, they've been used at the Camp Perry national shooting matches where they're shooting, you know, a thousand yards uh, with these rifles. So chambered in 308 caliber, again, 308, fantastic caliber, um, big main battle rifle, um, very good. I know a lot of the special operations community use these, use these types of rifles. They use M14s, but it's the same basic design. Um, they use these rifles in, in very inclement weather, frozen weather, that type of thing, um, primarily because the component parts of them are, be are very large and they're not really susceptible uh, to the effects of bad weather or cold or that type of thing. A um, couple of things about it. it uh, you want to actually use grease with these rifles. Uh, you don't use oil, you use grease, and you can use it fairly liberally um, in the action on these guns. Um, the action on these is pretty neat. It has a has a semi rotating has a rotating bolt, as you can see the way the bolt um, it actually rotates left, and then when you put it back in, it locks in. Um, the operating rod and all of that are substantial on this rifle. Um, if you look down the uh, look down into the breech there, everything in there is really big and blocky and solid. Um, not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, 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 pieces to go wrong, so to speak. The one thing I will warn you about with these guns, though, um, and this is something that I have seen happen in the past, do not get your finger trapped in that, uh, in that breech. Um, if you have a magazine in there, it is possible to lock this back without it actually being locked with the gun. It'll lock back on the magazine. If you remove the magazine, this is going to slam home. And if that slams home on your finger, I promise you, you will not forget it. It will leave it uh, pretty mangled. So, um, just kind of like Grand Thumb, M1A Thumb. Um, anyway, that's uh, that's the uh, that's the overall review of the Springfield M1A Scout. Uh, highly recommend uh, this platform. Whether you get the SOCOM 16 or you get the full size, um, great great battle rifle and a great addition to uh, any gun collection. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can, uh, you can uh, participate in our, our future review videos. Thanks so much for, for joining me. Bye-bye.